and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about painting the illusion of death, perspective. You know, this is actually part two of a series that we've been doing. The last one was all about different kinds of perspective points. One of them was if you do one, one dimension, there's no perspective, it's all flat as you can see. Then we started talking about a vanishing point and the lines start going to the vanishing point. And that's how you create like a, if you're on a street corner looking at a tall building, two vanishing points. This one shows it even better. And that's pretty convincing because now you're showing the sides. And when you have the sides, you just put some shadow on side and now we know where the sun's coming from. It's a pretty simple, uh, that's what I call, I could call it the illusion of depth. Okay, that worked great. That will be helpful when, <laughs> I had it upside down, when we go to actually put in different values. We have different values there. There's a little street scene and I'm, say I'm looking out of a building. So I'm only seeing two, I don't see the top of the building from that top point of the view. So now to make it even more dramatic and more dimensional, we're gonna pretend we're on a helicopter looking down on this building, just like this. So we have this view, this view, and this view, all in one simple drawing. And it's pretty convincing, the illusion of depth. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna show you what works for me. So you're probably wondering, where is all this going? Well, one of the things that's cool is to have different kinds of vanishing points all in one painting. Well, that's when your painting gets really wacky. Again, think of some of Van Gogh's bedroom scenes and things like, where things just get twisted. I kind of like doing that myself. I borrowed it from the wonderful French Impressionist and where as you became the vanishing point and it got wider, you know, just the opposite of everything. So I enjoyed playing with different vanishing points and I stole the idea from Van Gogh. His exaggerated, look how many different vanishing points he has in there. <laughs> all right, uh, well, that's where this is all gonna go and that's what makes your paintings kind of more dramatic, more twisted a little bit. And that's where you wanna show people your creativity. But I'm gonna start off first with this, the basic one, the simple one was called three point vanishing points where you get to see all three sides. All right, it's pretty cool and pretty convincing, especially if you're doing like a still life and you have blocks and, and, and objects sitting on the table, you wanna show all three sides, that kind of thing. So knowing that I'm, what I'm doing right now, it's a, mostly the, the simplest way of, of explaining the simple process. Now, also, I should let you know, my process is similar to all of us artists who do this. And once in a while, Many other artists start doing it their way. And I want you to look at that stuff. So I'm only one way. Okay, I'm not the way. I'm gonna show you the beginning. Here we go. So we talk about, first of all, you start off a piece of paper. And then I'm gonna draw this in red. So that way I can keep it in red. And then when I go to do the actual box, I'll do that in black. So I always like to do this. All you need is a simple, you can do this along with me or just watch the video. And this is the horizon line. You start off with the horizon line. <clears throat> All right. And on the horizon line, you put, I'm gonna put a dot. It's called the vanishing point. We'll just do something like this. Hey, you can see it. One over here and one over here. You're gonna do this several ways and put these vanishing points at different places. I'm just showing you the very first step, okay? And then what I like to do is put a vertical line in here. I don't know, I'm gonna do it all in red again, so you can see. Next time, I'm gonna put another vanishing point, let's say down here. Remember, this is three point perspective. Now, I, let's pretend I'm hovering over a, a building in Los Angeles and I'm seeing the top of the building, right? <laughs> so if this is the top of the building, then I'm gonna say this is the top of the building, right there. 
I also like to, somewhere along this line, I'm gonna put the bottom. These are not vanishing points, these are just points. This is the vanishing point, that's the vanishing point, that's the vanishing point. Cool, huh? Here's the next step. And I'll do this, this again in red. You connect that vanishing point to the top of the building. Here we go. And then connect what same over here. You can almost start to see where it's going. Cool, huh? Let's go down here. I'm gonna go here too. I'm gonna go here. And the same connecting over here. And somewhere along here, <laughs> I take it from there and go back over here. Same with over here. Let's say, oh, we're going way over here. Really going to exaggerate. And we go back to this vanishing point. Boy, you can see it coming together, huh? And that, yeah, I mean, you can just decide what you want to do. Most artists will have the bottom of the building or the box straight up and down. I like to pretend there's another vanishing point way over here. <laughs> I'm going to exaggerate it, almost like a cartoon. See, I don't, I don't go straight up and down. And just to really make it goofy, I exaggerate it that way. In other words, of course, it gives it a little bit of personality. Now, that's that part. Now I'm gonna come in with a darker pencil. You can see where it's all going. You can see where it's all going. Nice and dark. <laughs> Again, this is all about how to draw a pretty simple three-dimensional object. They could be buildings, things on a picnic table, baskets, you see. And this is how to make it almost look convincing. <laughs> problem is it's me showing you how I like to exaggerate everything <laughs> and so that's what that's the fun part and so we'll go back up into here and so I hope you do exaggerate everything <laughs> See, that's pretty dramatic and then the final connection <clears throat> and when I just showed you is one way of doing it. <laughs> There's several other ways of doing this also, you know? But see, it looks like the real thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna start putting some values into it to give it some three-dimensional. So hang in there, here we go. So now let's add some value to this whole thing that makes it more believable. And we're just gonna use three values. You know, the whitest white, the darkest dark, and the mid-tone. Just simple in black and white. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna wet my brush. I have some black paint here. I have some, a little bit of white. Here we go. I'm mixing up my paint here on my giant palette. My palette is actually my table. So I'm pretending the sun is up here somewhere. Okay? You have to have a light source. So it's shining on this side. So it's really gonna be shining on top of that roof. Well, it's not gonna be shining that much on this side. So I'm gonna do this. Loose sketching, huh? <laughs> oh, by the way, this is wonderful paper. This is watercolor paper I like to use. It's Kilimanjaro. 
it takes a beating. It's, it's fine, fine watercolor paper, but I beat it up, right? So that's one value. The top one is one value. That's the brightest bright. Here comes the side. Now we need to go in there and put the dark side. Whoa. I'm going to be to the dark side. It's going to be very dramatic, as you can see. Pretty wet in here, huh? So what you have here, I'm not going to tickle this thing to death. <laughs> I just want to... Now there's some highlights. Sometimes you can come in on this side and give it a little bit of highlight, make that lighter. And as it goes further away, this is, if you, this is now I get into a kind of a painting quality thing, see? And as it goes further away, it gets more dark. You'll remember that when we go to start using color later on, but right now we're only doing black and white and doing our best to give us some drama. So we're lightening up the corners a little bit, see, so it's not a big black hole. And it's nice to have a little bit of variation of value wherever you're going, and it makes it more painterly. And show people the brush marks. Show them how exciting it is to be a painter. Not how difficult. Okay, so now we have that. So we have three values. The brightest bright, the mid-tone, <laughs> and the dark side. Well, what about, what about the shadow? Obviously, the shadow is going to be going away from the light source. And it's usually on the same track, like this. i just do this lightly. Remember, when we start doing this, remember when we start doing this, color is going to be pretty exciting. I need to ground this, make this darker. So it really looks like it's sitting on its own shadow. It's important. Otherwise, it's floating in space. So I'm playing with different values at this point. You know, and you, you can too. And so now we have, again, more values. But so different in black and white, different values in black and white. But wait, what happens when we start using color? I'm gonna be doing the same thing on the next Bob Last about this three point perspective. And now you'll be able to make things even wilder with you know, wacky colors and strange angles if you want. And then I believe this will give you a whole lot more confidence and you start painting the way you have always wanted to paint. This is just a simple rule and, and then, it's, then you take over. Hey, thanks again for watching this Bob Blast. I'll see you on the next Bob Blast with color.